Chavshaft, everyone. Bonjour. Just out for my morning ride. Today, we learn about a Chavelte with a pure Bundist heart. And it's all thanks to the amazing work that she did when she was in Paris, in France. Today, we learn about Esther Rivka Richter, also known affectionately as Madame Ika. And we only know this story thanks to the hundreds of Holocaust survivors who spent countless hours creating the hundreds of Yiska books that are out there today, describing the mundane and the incredible. The political, the communal, the cultural, the personal stories out there from pre-war Poland. And thanks to David Meir for his work that he did in the Schelps Yiska book. And without him, we, we would know very little about Chava Te Ike. And while we go along that ride, we're going to be learning how to make the scrumptious, delectable croissants, which will mark her time in Paris. So, let's head upstairs. So because this is going to take two days, we're here in the evening to start off. And croissants, croissants, need to be very precise. So make sure you get yourself a kitchen scale, because it's going to be very useful. We'll start off with six grams of yeast, active dry yeast, and we've got some warm water here. Okay, so we need 130 mils, so obviously you can, if you've got a good measuring cup, you can measure that out, but mine doesn't have exactly per 10 mil, so I'm using my kitchen scale. So I'm just checking how warm it is now. We need it to be around 40 degrees. We're going to do what we've done in the past, mix the yeast in, give it a whisk. We leave that for about 10 minutes until it's nice and fluffy. In the meantime, you've got time to whip out your kitchen scales and we're going to get 250 grams of bread flour, 25 grams of butter. This butter is going to be melted down gently, so don't go too hard on it. 30 grams of sugar, granulated sugar, and then five grams of a fine sea salt. And so making sure that they're all precise measurements because then you'll get best croissants. And the last thing to do while you're waiting is also separate an egg yolk from an egg. We're going to need that egg yolk in just a bit. First we mix together all the dry ingredients. Give it a whisk. So now I'm going to separate an egg yolk. Almost lost at that one. And this is the way I do it, but there's lots of other ways. Usually I just pour it from shell to shell. Make sure as little of the white isn't coming along with it. So then you put one yolk in, the yeast mixture, and the butter. I'm using a spatula, and I'm just going to mix it together. You're eventually probably going to have to use your hands. So we're not going to be needing this for too long. You just want to bring it all together. Now we've got the ball, and to make it nice and strong, we're going to throw it down. Do this for about a minute. you want to see flat sides to it. Once you've done that, you want to make it into like a loose little ball. On that, we're going to put it back in the bowl, cover it with blood wrap, and put it in the fridge for 10 minutes. All right, it's been in the fridge for 10 minutes, and now we're going to do what's called the first turn. So come on in closer and we can see how it's done. What you're going to do, you're going to pick up from the edge, we're going to pull it up, Going to bring it to the middle and pat it down with your palm. And you're going to do that the whole way around the perimeter, being really careful just to stretch the dough, not to tear it. Ika was born on January 20th, 1887, in the town of Szelts, or Sielts, in Poland, northwest of Warsaw. Although Szelts was home to an active Bunden skiff organization, with strong influence on local trade unions and in political and cultural life, Ika only became involved with the Bund in her teens. Once you've done that last part, flip it over seam side down and back into the fridge for another 10 minutes. And now we do the exact same thing. Ika's father, Josef Leib Tatz, was a Gerer Hasid from the Gerer Hasid dynasty, the most popular and influential in pre-World War II Poland and the family was very from. So Ika received an orthodox Jewish education 
but also attended a private Polish school where she was taught the Russian curriculum as well. The stories of Ika, being the from girl that she was, walking with her friends one Shabbos afternoon, not realising that it was getting dark. Ika stopped mid-sentence, went under a tree and recited the Mincha service like the pious Jew that she was. Same as before, flip it upside down, but this time it's going back in the fridge for 25 minutes. Cool, so it's been in there for 25 minutes now. And what we've done in the meantime, we get some baking paper, we put it out like this, and we're gonna need a ruler. I'll explain why in just a bit. So we're getting out the ball of dough. What we're going to do is just lightly rolling it out towards seven inches. But we don't want it exactly seven inches just yet, just on the way there. Okay, so it's going to be seven by seven. Just making it into a rough sort of a shape for the time being. And then what you're going to do, we want to fold the paper. And this is where we're going to get that exact seven inch measurement. And when you've got the paper about seven by seven inches or close to, fold it over and then really evenly, not too hard, we're going to push the dough out all the way to the edges, okay? We want to do it really evenly, so you can, and we're going to push it all the way out to the corners, but if we push too hard, it might come flying out the corners, so we want to do it nice and soft and really easy pushing and keep it really even, we don't want it to, we want it to be completely flat. So really take your time on this one. Great, now we've got a seven by seven inch flat piece of dough and we're going to leave it flat like this in the fridge for 12 hours. So we'll see you tomorrow morning for some more cooking. Good morning, we're back early morning, 12 hours later and we're gonna start with what we call the barrage. And very similarly to the last thing we did last night, we're getting out the waxed paper, the baking paper, and we're going to cut exactly 138 grams of the butter and then place it into a nice rectangle. So I'll show you how it's done now. You want to make sure that you're going to cut them nice and evenly into nice little blocks. We're going to place it into the center of the baking paper and into a nice sort of square. We want it to be a bit less and we're going to use American measurements again, then four inches because we're going to want the paper to be folded into four inches like we did yesterday. So same as yesterday, flip it upside down. To start with we're just going to pat it down, that's just to amalgamate it sort of together. And we're going to start rolling. Giving even pressure. Right to the edges like we did with the dough as well. And that's pretty much what you want it to look like. Now we're putting the barrage in the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes for it to just chill down a bit. We've taken out our 12 hour dough. We've lightly floured our work surface. And we've also taken the barrage out as well. And what this part is called is the lamination. We're going to place the dough down and we're going to just lightly roll the corners out just a little bit. Okay, we don't want it too much of a mound in the middle. So you can roll that out a bit as well. Then we get our barrage and we're going to place that diagonally on top. And then we get the corners and we want to stretch them over the top. It's gone a bit dry overnight, which is not ideal, but it's okay. We want to pinch together the edges as well. Make sure there's no dough, oh sorry, no butter poking out. So we'll leave this. This is what it should look like for about two minutes, just to let the butter soften up and really make it pliable when we want to roll it out. But that leaves us time to speak about Ika, who had such a warm, 
humane and incredible heart. In Sheritz, she would be involved in educational activities for poor girls in the town and she would be teaching them to write in Yiddish and Polish as well as helping them with other studies as well. She also would work with these maid girls or other maid girls who were, you know, young and she would really push them to speak to their employers about giving them more time off to go and study. And this was long before she'd heard about unionism, before Bundism or before socialism. At 15, Eckhart went to Warsaw where she completed the rest of her education. And it was here that she first heard about and was involved with the Bundist movement. And as we know from our previous episodes, the Bund in Warsaw was quite active and had a lot of different union movements. But Eckhart really felt these new ideas and really a summation of her previous life within the Bundist ideology. And this only strengthened her burning desire to continue to fight for justice and equality for those in need. It was World War I and the German army took over Warsaw, but that only allowed Jewish organisations to flourish when they previously were illegal. And this flourishing activity led to the development of, the, of many different parts of the Bundist movement, including Glosser Kinder Heimen, which were a home for children. And Ika was really involved in these homes. She would show her love and spread her educational message to all these children. And this would eventually be developed into the Tsisho schools within Warsaw, and where Ika continued her job as a teacher. So obviously Ika was a great member of the Bund in Warsaw, however, the next part of her life is the one that remains the most important. She moved to London in 1924 and shortly after moved to France, to Paris. And we'll talk about that in just a bit, but let's get back to the cooking first. Now I turn it over and before we roll, we're going to use a lightly floured rolling pin and we're going to press down along the whole length of the dough and the width as well. And what that, that's going to do is really help the butter adhere to the dough. Once it's flattened out, we're going to start rolling. So we want to be really even with our rolling and we want to make this into a rectangle that's around 18 inches long. Sorry again for the American measurements. So what we're doing, we really don't want to rock back and forth. We don't want to cause it to be uneven, so it really has to be as even as possible and really be patient with this. You might want to keep flattening the sides because we want to keep it relatively narrow but we want to stretch it out to that 18 inch dough. It was in France that Ica's work was remembered best. She lived a staunch Bundist for her entire life in France, active in both the French Bund and Skiff. The Workers' Circle was founded by French Bundists in 1932 located at 110 Vier du Temple. It was within this building where the Nomberg Library was housed, which was named after the Polish-Jewish Yiddish writer Hirsch David Nomberg, who was a mentee of Yudlamid Peretz. There was a reception and a reading room, as well as a worker's kitchen. The worker's kitchen was created at the start of World War II, just before the Vichy anti-Jewish legislation was passed, as a place to feed Jewish workers homeless Jews and hungry Jewish students, as well as wives of Jewish men who were called to the front to fight for France. The Workers' Circle, also known as the Friendly Circle, was a safe haven for all who came through their doors. When the Workers' Kitchen was created, Ika was designated by the Bund to be its top administrator. She was the soul of the kitchen and provided support for each Chaver who walked through the door. She gave advice, she was a shoulder to cry on, and she would read letters sent to wives from the front. Ika was also an ardent activist. She was among the Jewish community's leaders who would meet at Leo Glezer's home the day after the German army entered Paris to establish what would become the Amelot Committee, a Bundist-influenced underground organisation. It was through this committee that Ika organised illegal departures from Paris. She found families for children to be hidden with in the French countryside as well. So now I've got our long dough, we're going to fold the bottom half 
three quarters of the way up and then we're going to take the top half and bring it to meet it. And then we take the bigger bit and we fold it up to the top like that. What we're going to do now is we want to tap it. We're not going to push it, we're just going to tap it together lightly with the rolling pin. And now we're wrapping it in glad wrap and we're going to be putting it into the fridge for one hour. So it's been an hour in the fridge, we've got it out. Make sure you've got a lightly flat work surface again. Okay, but this time we're going to be doing the same thing. Pat it down a bit and then we're going to be rolling lengthways, just like before, and make sure we're not going to push too hard, we're not going to be rocking too much, we just want to make it as even as possible, and we're going to make it out to 18 inches again. The Nazi arrival to Paris caused mass Jewish evacuation, but Ica stood firm to protect the kitchen, the Arbiter Ring, and all those who were there seeking refuge. The building was one of few Jewish organisations who remained open during this time. The Nazis would submit the building and the kitchen to constant attacks in attempts to take over all Jewish organisations. Even when those around her begged Ica to use her American visa and leave Paris, she refused, showing the reflection of her character, that she would not leave behind those who needed her most. The Nazis continued their intimidation on the Arbeterring, entering the premises in the autumn of 1942 with the aim of inspecting the library and confiscating books. However, on arrival, cans of food were stacked up past waist height, blocking the cupboards in which the Nomberg library books were stored. The Gestapo decided they would return the next day, and in the meantime, Nathan Shachnovsky and his wife Marguerite, Concierge Rosier and Madame Ica, some of the few remaining Buddhists in Paris at the time, transported all the books, over three to 5,000 of them, in wooden boxes to the second cellar in the building, two floors below ground. The workers' kitchen came to an abrupt and frightening end, with the German police and even the head of the Gestapo, Theodor Danneke, storming the kitchen, arresting Ica and imprisoning her in the fortress Romainville. The books were never confiscated, however, and then would form the basis of the library's continued existence and eventual development of the Medem Bibliothèque, which continues its work in Paris today. Through the testimony of Khaver Nathan Shachnovsky, who was imprisoned with Ica, we know that Ica maintained her loyalty to her Khaverim even through torture and isolation. She did not reveal the names of those involved in the various organisations and committees to the Nazis the only answer given, her cryptic smile. She continued to provide love and support to her fellow imprisoned Chavayrim until her death, reportedly from a heart attack on October 5th, 1942. Now we're going to take the top, fold it down to around third, and then the bottom one up. And you should be aiming for getting close to a perfect square and now we're going to wrap this up again and it's going to go back in for one hour but it could go anywhere up to 12 hours if you can for that. Another hour in the fridge, a little bit longer and we're removing it from the plastic wrap. And again a lightly flowered surface and this time we're just going to roll it out again. But this time, instead of doing a long 18 inch one, we're going to do a wider, so you want the edges here and the fold to be at the top and the bottom, and we're going to make it a wider piece of dough. So we'll spend some time on that and then we'll get to the next bit. So as you can see here, when I'm rolling it, it's sort of pulling back on itself a little bit elastic. We don't really want that. What we want is it for it to glide out smoothly. So what we can do in the meantime is put it back in the fridge for just a little bit longer and that way it'll give the dough a little bit of time to rest. But don't fold it or anything, just put it in as, as it is. And then um, we'll be back. I'm gonna put it in for maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and we'll get back to it in a little bit. Back out of the fridge now. 
And as you can see, it's a little bit better, not, not resisting as much, which is great. That's what we are aiming for. Now we're going to, with our knife, make little cuts at about 10 centimeters. And then in between those 10 centimeters at the top. Okay, and then one motion, we're going to cut from the one end to the other in one clean cut like that. So now we've got each of our individual croissants. Hopefully you've cut through a bit better than I did. And what you're going to do is take each one individually and stretch it out. But if it resists in any way, then stop pulling. So just maybe a few centimetres bigger. Without pushing too hard, you're going to tightly roll these. We're not squeezing, we're just tightly rolling and we want as many rotations as we can get. Then you're just going to push in that little tail. And if you have a look from the side there, look at those layers. And we're going to do them with each one now. Today, Madame Ika's memory lives on. After the war, Skiff and Bund named their chateau where they held winter and summer camps after Ica. Foyer Ica, which is situated in Kovol, still houses camps for Jewish youth through Klej, to which Skiff transferred the management of the chateau. The chateau can also be rented out throughout the year. And we're going to transfer them onto baking sheet with baking paper on it. And we want to put it so that the tail is face down and that the croissant won't unravel when it's being cooked. Okay, and after we've done that, we're going to just give all of them a bit of an egg wash, just with a whisked whole egg. As Dina Rieber wrote in Unser Stimme in 1945, she was neither a speaker nor a journalist. Her voice was never heard from the stands, her name was never in the headlines. Her slender figure, her head covered somewhat with sparse grey hair, and her prematurely wrinkled face, her whole character exuded modesty. In her presence you did not feel the pressure that big speakers put on you. She remained a volunteer, in the shadows, and yet wherever she was, in her house, or in a small group of individuals, or in the movement room, where she was particularly present during the last months of her life, the atmosphere was filled with Ica's spirit. She shared with those around her her wonderful energy, which vigorously penetrated even the thickest skins. Now we're going to leave them to prove for two hours. Hopefully they'll be doubled in size and you want them somewhere where there's not too much of a draft going through and because then there might be uh, a skin that forms on them. You also want to make sure it's not too warm because if it's going to be you know over or closer to 30 degrees or high 20s the butter start, might start to leak out so you want a place that is around 20 degrees Celsius and leave them there for two hours. Uh, if you have another sort of rack you can put it over the top or another baking tray that fits nicely but be aware you want to give them room to grow. So we'll be back in a couple of hours. Alright, two hours has been. Um, they probably weren't in the ideal temperature so if you can try and adjust the temperature uh, to your liking to around 20-21 degrees. I think that would be ideal. So they're probably not as puffy as I would have liked, but we're going to give it a go anyway. And if you have a look at them, they're definitely bigger than what they were. And they jiggle a little bit when I jiggle the tray. So they should be jiggly, they should be puffy, they're probably not as puffy. And some of the um, layers should start coming apart, which on a few of them they have. We've put the oven on to 200 degrees and we are just going to do one final very, very light egg wash, so we're not pushing hard at all, and then we're going to put it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, here they are. Maybe not as buttery as we would have liked, but they're still looking mighty fine. We'll give them a little bit of time to cool off and then we'll chow down. And this is to Ika, who spent her lifetime dedicated 
to not only the Bundes movement, but to bettering the world for those around her. We celebrate and we put up our croissants for her. So let's enjoy it. Magnifique. Have a shot. <laughs> 